How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather's Phone 5000 and I hope you all are having a great day as today. Of course, we're going to take a look closely at two disturbances, one being Tropical Storm Philippe as well as one that likely will become Tropical Storm Rita as well as another area that's of interest right around the Western Caribbean that could develop into a tropical storm. So first, I want to show you guys the Global Tropics Hazards Outlook and we do see that for the week ending October 10th, there it, um, the Clam Prediction Center is outlining an area between the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and the Western Atlantic where tropical cyclone development is possible. And this extends to the week ending October 17th where the Clam Prediction Center is also um, forecasting the possibility of tropical cyclone development right around the Western Caribbean. So this is an area that's very, um, that's very used to tropical cyclone development during the month of October. However, since we're seeing uh, an enhanced gyre right over Central America that's expected to persist over the next several weeks, it seems like the Com Prediction Center is at least acknowledging the fact that maybe out of one of the areas of thunderstorm activity, we could see a well-defined low pressure system develop and as a result, our next tropical storm. And this could potentially be a concern for the United States and the Caribbean islands in the more long-term future. So we're definitely gonna keep a close eye on this gyre right over Central America. So this is a gyre I'm talking to you guys about where we do see plenty of convective activity going on. Heavy rainfall occurring right around the Nicaragua area and this extends into Florida where there is a decent amount of thunderstorm activity going on over that area. However, you could probably tell that it's under a highly sheared environment and the thing that might save us from a tropical storm developing in the Gulf of Mexico or the Western Caribbean would be the stronger wind shear. Of course, as we approach the month of October, we begin to see the wind shear increase because we begin to see the cooler air mass located in the northern portions of the northern hemisphere move down which increases the instability which enhances the, the overall wind shear which makes it more difficult for tropical storms to develop in the month of October but it's certainly possible especially if this is able to tap into some of that instability that's associated with a subtropical jet moving through the southern portion of the United States and I'd be willing to bet that at least in one of these areas not necessarily the ones we see right now but there could potentially be a future area where the convective activity might be a little bit too much to the point where we could see a tropical storm develop out of it within the next few weeks so we're definitely going to keep tabs on this gyre and moving on to our next two surfaces here's tropical storm felipe and we do see there is a decent amount of convective activity going on but it's very lopsided at this point most of the moisture is located on the western half and it's due to the fact that there's a lot of dry air located just in front of it this dry air originated from the saharan desert has moved all the way towards the caribbean and this is the reason why felipe is expected to struggle as it approaches the caribbean however it could bring some enhanced rainfall to guys within the next few days so throughout um the lesser antilles puerto rico dominican republic haiti you need to be aware of the possibility of enhanced rainfall and here's what likely will become tropical storm Rena. we do see quite a bit of convective activity it is under a fairly conducive environment to at least develop into a tropical storm and it's expected to slowly intensify before potentially becoming a major hurricane in the more long-term future as of right now, the National Hurricane Center is giving this storm a 90% chance of formation within the next 7 days. So you should at this point pretty much expect Tropical Storm Rena to develop. And the, and the recent trend from one of the more reliable computer models, the European model, has been a little bit concerning because it does want to bring it a little bit further southward. So maybe the Lesser Antilles could get involved. So here's what the latest run of the European model is forecasting when it comes to relative humidity in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. Pretty much anywhere in the atmosphere that has a millibar pressure between 300 millibars and 700 millibars, which is considered right around the mid-levels of the atmosphere and continuing to move forward. Here's Tropical Storm Philippe, and we do see plenty of dry air. Like I said, this is expected to struggle and could easily fizzle out by the time it approaches the Caribbean, which is good news, but still could bring an enhanced amount of thunder shower activity. I don't expect it to be much, maybe 
one to two inches if you're unlucky anywhere between the lesser antilles and puerto rico at least associated with charles and philippe so not much to worry about but if this were to at least stay alive by the time we approach this weekend which is still unknown then you should at least expect a higher amount of rainfall at least compared to what the caribbean islands have been experiencing over the past several days where it's been rather dry for the most part philippe could change that if it, it's able to maintain its strength but it's not really looking good at this point just too much dry air for this to handle so we could see this fizzle out just before um it's um just before it reaches the caribbean which is certainly good news however the thing that got that has me more concerned with most recent um european model run is um tropical storm reno where we do see that by saturday time frame its millibar pressure should hover around 998 millibars so it should be around tropical storm status and we do see it's also pretty lopsided which is certainly good news however unlike philippe it's going to deal with a lot less dry air and the reason being is in part due to tropical storm philippe because tropical storm philippe help alleviate the dry air that would be just to the west of um of tropical storm rena and that would uh, enhance um the amount of moisture the amount of instability surrounding tropical storm rena for the convective activity to continue and the stability to not be as high to completely fizzle it out like we saw with tropical storm philippe and also we're gonna see a, a mid latitude low move through the united states um as we approach next week and eventually move into the western atlantic which should help destabilize the atmosphere just enough for this storm system not to deal with as much dry air as Philippe and would likely enhance the possibility of this intensifying as this continues ahead further westward, which is exactly what the European model is forecasting. Now, the good news for now, at least, is that the European model still expects a storm system to move just to the north east of the caribbean um more so the lesser antilles however this is certainly a lot closer compared to the last run where the european model was a um, why to take the storm a little bit um further eastward and further from the caribbean um but now it wants to take it a little bit closer so this could be a concerning trend and remember look at the forecast hour this is 174 hours out so there's still a possibility we could see pretty major shifts with the forecast and it really all depends on the amount of ridging just to the north and let me show you guys the height anomaly we do see the primary steering um steering flow will be this week bermuda azores high and it'll be at least um based on what the european model is forecasting right now it's expected to be weak enough to a point where it'll have a somewhat of an open area to move north of the caribbean where we do see this um upper level low move in just off the coast of florida and another low pressure system that's moving just to the north um east of bermuda that should allow just enough of an opening uh, for this to move for northward and we do see the storm system becomes very strong in the northern atlantic and some of you when looking at least at this geopotential height anomaly might be concerned because um at this point at where the storm's at it looks like it's pretty trapped from ridging so some may expect that this storm system would take a more westward track and potentially be a, a more long-term impact for the united states however there's two big things you need to consider. For one thing is that the forecast hour is 240 hours out. That's still way too far to say anything for certain um, um, that'll happen to the United States with this storm system. Um, and it's not even close to the United States, um, as a matter of fact, at this hour. So keep that in mind. And another thing, too, is that typically during, um, during a scenario like this, storm systems most of the time steer out, um, move out to sea because although there is ridging just to the north of it, there's still a uh, um, there's still sh a strong easterly flow right um, just to the north of this ridge. And while this ridge is may create somewhat of a strong uh, of a stronger westerly flow along the surface, we have to keep in mind that the subtropical jet is still moving through this area. And while the subtropical jet, of course, isn't as strong as a polar jet we see in the higher 
um, latitudes, it's still strong enough to be able to steer the storm out to sea. So most likely in a scenario like this, it'll move out to sea. If we were to see this take a westward track, I'd need to see this ridge a lot stronger, a little bit further northward for me to say confidently this will take a westward track. But most likely this will take a track further eastward um, since we're still seeing sh uh, strong easterly flow um, thanks to this pressure gradient between this ridge and this low pressure system. So I wouldn't at all worry um, about this just yet for the United States. And you likely won't need to ever worry because this will most likely move out to sea before it comes anywhere close to the United States. Well, in case uh, the possibility changes, well, we never know 240 hours out. I'll keep you guys updated. My, my bigger concern would be for the Caribbean if we do see this ridge become a lot stronger because that's certainly a more realistic scenario. We have seen we have seen possibilities where this ridge becomes a lot stronger and forces this storm system a lot further southward. And um, the European model has taken a shift a little bit closer to the southwest as of the latest run so the ridge will be key here and we won't really have a confident forecast i'll say until maybe this weekend right around saturday to sunday time frame once the storm system is right around um this longitude we're gonna really see how strong this ridge would be um but i'll keep you guys updated over the next several days however i will say that it seems likely that it won't fizzle out it'll at least at the very least, maintain tropical storm strength as this continues ahead further westward. And in the more long-term future, I definitely wouldn't rule out the possibility this rapidly intensifies thanks to the lack of dry air that would be induced by a higher amount of moisture that's associated with this uh, mid-latitude low moving through. So, um, the, so at the very least, expect the tropical storm and um, the Caribbean. You at least want to keep tabs on this the gfs model is showing a better scenario doesn't want to take this really close to the caribbean at all but still expects the storm to become quite strong so watch out for rip currents and higher surf along the caribbean islands but expects a lot um ridging a lot weaker but it's good to also keep in mind that the gfs model was already incorrect with philippe um with philippe when it comes to its trajectory because if you remember yesterday um the GFS model wanted to take Philippe a lot further northward and a lot further away from the Caribbean. But now the GFS model is leaning more to the European model, which is leaning, which means it, it's leaning towards more ridging just to the north of this storm system. So there could be that possibility that the European model has a better handle when it comes to tropical storm arena than the GFS model does, since it was already wrong with Philippe and the amount of ridging that will be just to the north of it. So I'd still I'll lean a little bit closer to the European model, but can't disregard the GFS model either. Um, but anyways, I'll keep you guys updated. Now, in terms of the possibility of tropical cyclone development over the Gulf of Mexico or the Western Caribbean, so both of the computer models are agreeing that there should be a pretty um, um, elongated and prolonged period of moisture moving through the cent uh, moving through Central America as well as Florida, where we do see this gyre sort of stays around for quite a while. And let me go to the 12Z run, gives a more long-term forecast. Um, so take a look at what the European model is forecasting. We do see that um, the European model expects us, um, at least a decent amount of moisture to stay around, but eventually expects dry air to come in um, by the mid-October timeframe, which would certainly be the best case scenario. Take a look at what the GFS model is stating. It's also expecting an influx of dry air to move in, but this gyre is definitely something to at least keep in watch for the early part of October. Um, gyre, um, Central American gyres are typically known to produce tropical cyclones, especially during the month of October. So any one of any um, area where you, you could see an enhanced um an enhanced risk of convective activity should always be um should always be um acknowledged at the very least when it comes to tropical cyclone development so we're going to keep tabs on this and also the sea surf temperatures are much warmer than average for this time of the year 
like I'll show you guys in last in the last video um, we do see there are pretty uh, large pockets where the sea surf temperatures are hovering um, but anywhere between the mid to upper 80s and there's plenty of upper ocean heat content as well so even if a storm system were to linger over one area it's gonna it would need to take a while to bring enough upwelling to where the sea surf temperatures would be cool enough for a tropical cyclone at least not to intensify so there's plenty of fuel for tropical cyclone development right over the caribbean more fuel than usual as we approach the early part of october which is the reason why i'm a little bit concerned with the central american gyre um that's building right over um over the next several days However, like I said earlier, the thing that could potentially save the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico from any tropical cyclone development is a strong wind shear that's expected right over the area. So it's um, so we do see that over the next several days, the wind shear is expected to remain just very strong thanks to the subtropical jet moving through. And it's typical during the month of October, the wind shear certainly does strengthen. Um, but it's also good to keep in mind that even though the wind shear is strong over the Gulf of Mexico, that doesn't completely diminish the possibility of tropical cyclone development because, of course, um, we've seen tropical cyclones develop even under strong wind shear if there's enough barrel clinic instability. So there could be that possibility that a subtropical storm does develop right around the Gulf of Mexico um, to the point where we could potentially see tropical cyclone development and the instability associated with the stronger wind shear could only enhance potentially a stronger storm developing. So the wind shear doesn't diminish tropical cyclone development entirely, but it does at least diminish the possibility it could rapidly intensify under wind shear like this. At the very worst with strong wind shear like this, um, um, a, at least a category one hurricane could develop, at least assuming that it wasn't in an area where it was developing under lighter wind shear. Cause we've seen scenarios where such as hurricane Wilma, very strong storm. And although it dealt with strong wind shear, it was a category three hurricane, but it, it mainly developed, um, under a lightly sheared environment, um, for category three to develop under a strong sheared environment from the ground up. That's near impossible, but um, the stronger wind shear, my point is, could help alleviate tropical cyclone development, and hopefully the computer models maintain that forecast. Here's a look at the European Ensemble member forecast, and what does have me a little bit more concerned is that we do see a couple of Ensemble members do wanting to um, take tropical Sormina closer to the Lesser Antilles and the Puerto Rico area to where those um, areas would experience more direct impacts we're gonna need to keep in mind if this trend continues don't take don't pretty much don't make your projected path cone out of the ensemble members because the ensemble members could shift um a lot day by day so um definitely be aware of that possibility um for the um the next few days um so the lesser antilles and puerto rico and potentially as far west as the dominican republic just at least keep tabs on how the ensemble members shift their forecast but that's it for now, guys. I thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. And make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather-related content. Make sure to like this video if you do enjoy it. And make sure to follow my TikTok um, talk down below for further updates.